everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. You can hear the bells. That's the sound that drove Quasimodo absolutely mad. And his love for Esmeralda, of course. But that is not, those are not the bells of the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Those are the bells of a church in the fine town, and they're joined by another, a serenade. The fine town of Elblong, that's right. We were in Ostroda, which is one end of the Elblong Canal, one of the wonders of Poland, and now we're in Elblong, which is the northern uh, end of that canal. Well, it's actually about 20 miles uh, or 20 kilometers outside of town to the south. It empties in a series of lakes, which are just to the south of the city. Here, behind me, a fantastic Old Town Gate. You know how I know that? Because I read it right here. Now, I can see it's an Old Town Gate, but I did read it in 300 minutes to discover Elbong, because I'll tell you something. In just a few hours, you could find out everything you want to know about Elbong. Now, the gate here is very interesting because you're going to see a lot more of this in Gdansk, this type of uh, architecture. It was built in the 1300s, and at one time it was, uh, there were fortified walls around the base of it. Now it's just a viewing tower. Uh, we won't be going up there today, but perhaps on another, a future, a future uh, visit, because uh, we're not going to do Elblong. I just wanted to show you a little bit about it. It was uh, for two more reasons. One, it was the center of the Teutonic Order, was right here. Um, but it is also kind of a smaller Gdansk, if you will. It also resembles some of the buildings you'll, you'll notice if you've been to Amsterdam, look a little bit like it. You see a lot more of that in Gdansk. But this was a small Gdansk or a small Amsterdam once upon a time. It must have been absolutely a beautiful town uh, up until World War II when it was devastated. So a lot of these buildings have been uh, lovingly recreated in the spirit, but a modernized spirit of uh, the Hanseatic look because uh, Elblong was uh, on the edge of the Hanseatic trade being a port near to Gdansk or Danzig, if uh, you remember it from your studies as Danzig. There's a uh, interesting legend about a fella a statue, it said in this, uh, in this here brochure, it said there's a fella, a statue of a nice young man. So let's go find out who the nice young man is. Come on. This here is the nice young gentleman, according to this brochure. But it's, well, it's not really a gentleman, as you can see. It's a, uh, it's a bronze statue of a young, nice young gentleman. Um, because we can't talk to him. But if we could talk to him, he would tell us the story of how he used this sh here shovel, this implement, to cut the rope that was holding the grating up here. The grating was up. He used the shovel, he cut the rope, and it stopped the Teutonic Knights from invading the city. Krakow has a similar because um, uh, the, the grate went down, that's, that's why. The grate went down, that's the point. Um, uh, if only statues could talk, but they can't. There's a similar uh, legend, I suppose you'd call it, in, in Krakow. Perhaps has, uh, it holds a little more water, although that's a nice story. The Elblong story is a nice one, um, which is uh, of the bugler who blew the trumpet announcing the invading Tartar army so they could get the gates closed. Because getting the gates closed was important when people were invading, because they were very sneaky, these Teutonic Knights. I told you before, not only did they sneak up and try to get into your town with their knightliness, but they also, well, they came, they were given a refuge in Poland after being kicked out of Hungary by the Hungarian king, kicked out of Transylvania, in fact. They were given refuge in Poland, and what did they do? Good Lord, they started taking over territory. So it just goes to show, uh, be nice but be firm. So 
Thanks a lot to the fine young gentleman, and uh, let's move on. Well, we were walking by, and we just couldn't help but stop and admire this Rolls Royce of communism. I mean, this is a fine example of a, uh, a car that was produced in uh, the German Democratic Republic, I think they called it, which is <laughs> a good name for it. Uh, it describes nothing about it. But at any rate, this is called a Trabant. It's been redone a little bit. The, uh, the wheels, a Trabant, an actual Trabant, the, uh, in its uh, earlier state, never saw wheels like that. And somebody's put a little custom steering wheel in it. And, uh, and there you have it. But this is uh, an exceptional little automobile. It's exceptional for its complete awfulness. It has a, it has a, a tiny sort of lawnmower type engine and uh, it uh, put putted out the most noxious smoke that you've ever smelled in your life. It's a complete bag of bolts. But uh, in retrospect, there's still something kind of pretty about it, isn't there? Um, but anyway, and look at its sad eyes. Look at those sad Trabant eyes. It's supplemented with its bifocal uh, extra pair of uh, fog light eyes now. But there you are, the Trabant. Oh, there it is, see? Ba-bam. What a beautiful, a beautiful, and this is a two-tone one. This is the sport version of the Trabant. A beautiful car, a fine East German product, and possibly, the worst car ever made, if not close to it. So feast your eyes. <laughs> Voila, as the French would say. They don't say it much in Poland, but perhaps they should try it. Um, here it is, the St. Nicholas Cathedral. No visit to Elblanc would be uh, uh, complete without having a look at this cathedral. It's 100 meters tall, the bell tower. Uh, I thought you might like to know. So it's about as long as football field from the base to the top. And it just gives you some idea of how rich this town must have been to have a building like that built in that solid uh, style. This uh, would have cost a pretty penny back in the uh, 13th century when it was uh, first constructed. So this is quite a monument. And you can see that it's been lovingly restored again uh, after the war. Then you can see on both sides what, what have been modernized Hanseatic, Hanseatic type buildings of, of which, as I've said before, we'll see a lot of these in Gdansk, this sort of Amsterdam look. Um, the whole city was like this. The whole uh, uh, town was like this at one point. Uh, but sadly, uh, we have not the original, but the restored version. It still looks nice, but uh, not quite the same, not quite the same. Uh, and behind us, we have the beautiful uh, Elblanc, the Elblanc Canal River, uh, or the river actually, uh, leading uh, to the lakes, no doubt. So that's it from Elblanc, and now it's on to Gdansk, where my friend Glenn is waiting for us. We've got to go meet him at the station. So watch Poland Daily Travel, and the next time you see me, it will be at the station in Gdansk, I hope, meeting my friend Glenn, who is a famous uh, musician in Poland and a DJ. So stay tuned to the next episode from Gdansk of Poland Daily Travel on the road. See ya.